Hello friends, in today's video, I am going to discuss about the important enzyme of glycolysis. For more biochemistry videos, kindly like my channel that is Tarundip's Basic Biochemistry Classroom. So, starting with the, another name of glycolysis is EMT pathway. What does this EMT stand for? The EMT stands for Amden Meerhof Parnas pathway, which is the name given as an honor to the contributor of the discoverer of glycolysis. Now, what does this word mean? Glycolysis. Glyco means glucose, lysis means breakdown. So, in this process, there is a breakdown of glucose to the pyruvate. So, you can see there is a series of reactions which convert 6 carbon uh, compound glucose to the 2 3 carbon compound that is pyruvate. So, 1 glucose is forming 2 pyruvate. In glycolysis, you will observe that 2 ATPs are used and 4 ATPs are formed and 2 NADH is formed. If I say where is the site of glycolysis, the site of glycolysis is cytosol and it occurs in all the cells, all the tissues of the organism and it is occurring on almost in all animal cells. So the fate of pyruvate which is formed from glucose, it depends upon the presence of oxygen or the absence of oxygen or the presence of mitochondria or the absence of mitochondria. In case if the mitochondria is present, if oxygen is available, this pyruvate is converted to acetyl CoA or it is uh, the NADH formed in this process is utilized in the ETC chain or the respiratory chain. But if the oxygen is unavailable or the tissues which lack the mitochondria such as erythrocyte, lens, retina, in that case lactate is formed. When pyruvate forms the lactate, in the absence of oxygen, it is known as anaerobic glycolysis. In the presence of oxygen, pyruvate enters the mitochondria and forms acetyl CoA. It's an aerobic glycolysis. Here given is the names of all the glycolytic enzymes. There are 10 enzymes which we have to remember in the process of glycolysis. But the enzyme which are highlighted with the blue color, they are the one which are involved in the irreversible step of glycolysis. First one is hexokinase or glucokinase, second one phosphofructokinase and third one is the pyruvate kinase. But we will also discuss the function of rest of the enzyme. First enzyme of the glycolysis is the hexokinase or glucokinase. The function of this enzyme is to phosphorylate the glucose in the presence of ATP and magnesium to glucose 6-phosphate. So the moment the glucose enters the cell, with the help of facilitated diffusion, facilitated diffusion is the diffusion with the help of transporter, it gets trapped because glucose 6-phosphate is unable to go out, it is unable to exit the cell. So uh, the trapping of glucose 6-phosphate occurs so that glycolysis process can occur. So glucose 6-phosphate will be converted to fructose 6-phosphate with the help of enzyme phosphohexose isomerase. Now this fructose 6-phosphate will again get phosphorylated with the help of enzyme phosphofructokinase in the presence of ATP and magnesium to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Till here it is the energy investment phase ATP is being utilized. After that there is a be splitting of the 6 carbon compound to the 3, 2, 3 carbon compound. So fructose 1,6-bisphosphate will convert it to 2 trioses one glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate and second one dihydroxy acetone phosphate and they are interconvertible with the uh, enzyme phosphotriose isomerase. Glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate is converted to 1,3-bis phosphoglycerate with the help of enzyme glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase which involves NAD positive to release NADH. And so in this step NADH is released. So, 2 NADH is formed in this step and it is it get inhibited by the iodoacetate and arsenide. So, you have to remember the inhibitors also. Then, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted to 3-phosphoglycerate with the help of enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase and ATP is released. So, this is a very good example of substrate level phosphorylation. Substrate level phosphorylation means ATP is formed from the substrate. So, 1,3-bis phosphoglycerate is converted to 3-phosphoglycerate. 
with the help of enzyme phosphoglycerin mutase, three phosphoglycerate will be converted to two phosphoglycerate. Then enzymolase will convert two phosphoglycerate to phosphoenone pyruvate. Another important point to remember that this enzyme is inhibited by the fluoride. So whenever we are estimating the glucose uh, in samples, we are adding the anti-glycolytic agent that is sodium fluoride because fluoride binds with the anulase and forms the complex and inhibits its activity so that uh, glycolysis process can stop. If we are estimating the glucose without adding the anti-glycolytic agent, the level of glucose will be low because it, it is being utilized uh, in glycolysis. So it's very important to add the anti-glycolytic agent when we are estimating the glucose. Then now phosphenone pyruvate is converted to pyruvate with the help of enzyme pyruvate kinase and in this step also ATP is formed. Next is the role of lactate dehydrogenase in anaerobic respiration. We know when uh, there is non availability of oxygen or when mitochondria is absent, pyruvate is converted to the lactate. And in this process, NADH is utilized, which we have seen that it comes from when glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate is being converted to 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate. So the NADH uh, formed is used by the lactate dehydrogenase and it converts NADH uh, plus H positive to the NAD positive which is again used by this step. So the cycle of glycolysis continues.